In the world of JoJo's bizarre adventure, the stakes and villains are ever-evolving, with a changing roster of heroes rising to the challenge. JoJo is known for its colorful characters, but the protagonists are the heart of the series. With over 30 years of manga and counting, there is an incredible variety of titular characters to choose from. But with that collection comes the inescapable comparisons. Who's the strongest? Who's the wittiest? Who is the most bizarre? This ranking is going to take a few things into consideration. Being such an action-packed series, the abilities and powers of the characters have to be taken into account. Tactical abilities, strategy, and quick thinking all help round out their battle abilities. Aside from their physical strengths, we'll be assessing their accomplishments in the series, what impact have they created in the franchise, and how iconic they are. With such a legacy behind it and much to come, who knows what the next generation of JoJo will bring. Now on with the list. Alright, it's easy to pick on the new guy, but hear me out first. Josuke Higashikata, or Gappy to the majority of the fanbase, is certainly up there on the bizarre scale. Being a fusion of two individuals, he's only actually existed as a person for a matter of months. In terms of powers, his stand blends together parts of both Josefumi and Kira's stands. His stand, the elegantly named Soft and Wet, has decent physical strength. The more exciting ability is the bubbles it creates, able to generate protective layers and surround people or objects. They've even been used to reach higher vantage points by lifting a person with them. The bubbles can steal properties of both living and non-living things, an ability inherited from Josefumi. They've been shown to remove friction from a floor, steal someone's eyesight temporarily, and even drain water from the human body. Since Josuke is a fusion of two characters, he gains traits from another stand as well. Aspects of Kira's stand, Killer Queen, can be activated, shown in the divided designs of the bubbles. This makes one side of his bubbles function as explosives as well, with Josuke able to detonate them at will. He hasn't had much of a chance to change the world yet. Currently, he's trying to help cure his mother from an incurable disease with the help of a mystical fruit. Now, his arc is still going, so maybe at some point in the future he would be higher on this list. But for now, good old Gappy will have to settle for last place. Jonathan will always be able to hold his head high as the first of the JoJo's, but times have certainly changed since this gentleman sunk to the bottom of the sea. Now, he had one of the shorter runs, if you aren't counting the time that Dio was piloting his body, but his echo is felt through the first three parts. But after that, he's left a bit to the wayside. Hamon was his major ability, having trained under Zeppeli in order to master it. Hamon, though being an effective force, does have its weaknesses, as the cutoff air supply can immediately hinder a user. Without Hamon, Jonathan was still noted to have an explosive power and could wield multiple weapons and perform great feats of athleticism. His quick thinking and combat strategies kept him more evenly matched against Dio. In the long run, his super abilities became outdated fairly quickly, being the only JoJo that doesn't wield a stand. This all coming before Dio placed an arrow in his chest, granting his descendants their own stands. Jonathan's desire to be a true gentleman affects the way he conducts himself and how he fights. Not prone to violence as a first resort, he only uses excessive force when he is facing something truly evil. This makes him a very honorable figure, able to make connections from that, as with Speedwagon. He keeps his honor in the end, content with his choice to die, knowing that he was taking Dio with him, allowing his wife to escape safely. Even with a weaker power set, Jonathan gets the leg up for defeating Dio, though temporarily, and setting the events in motion. His final sacrifice ensured the survival of his family and led to the many generations of supernatural adventures to follow. Josuke Higashikata. The original Josuke Higashikata, mind you. A fun delinquent with a charismatic personality and an incredibly distinct look. The author himself has noted this Jojo to be his favorite character of the entire series. Someone who isn't all muscle-bound heroes, more of a regular person. Well, as regular as one can get when dealing with stand serial killers. So what gets him so low in the ranks? Josuke's mission centers around his hometown of Morio. There's a good amount of violence 
violent stand users that find their way to him, including the notorious Kira, a very different character from his other world namesake. The wanting to protect the place he grew up in is noble, certainly. Compared to some of the other contenders, he's no globetrotting hero. His influence sticks to his town and the people around him. One of Josuke's more defining traits is compassion. He's not one to use violence out of the gate, unless you insult his hair. That is evident in his stand, Crazy Diamond. Not to say it can't pack a punch, just that its strength is outshined by its other talents. The mending ability it possesses can be used in creative and more strategic ways, like when he ate a torn up glove to avoid possession by Aqua Necklace. Not a conventional plan by any means, but certainly effective. Josuke shows the new direction that Hidehoko Araki was taking the series in part for, a more human approach rather than a superhero series. His personality and charm keep him a fan favorite. If we ever learn more of his adventures, maybe he could slide up the list. But for now, we can be happy knowing he is one of the very few JoJo's still living. That has got to count for something. Johnny Joestar carves a bold new path with his introduction. The first entry in a new universe, he is the equivalent of Jonathan from another dimension. The uh, names are the only thing they share, however. Instead of the gentleman that is Jonathan, we have a young man who will do anything to get what he wants. His dark determination is referenced a few times, reminding us that he will get rid of anyone or anything that stands in his way. Power-wise, he's granted both a new stand and a new power called Spin, seeming to take the place of Hamon. His original intent was to regain the use of his leg through spin, but later sought the corpse parts in order to cure his paralysis. Through his stand, Tusk, he is able to fire his own fingernails as projectiles with extreme accuracy and force. The nails can cut through a variety of objects, including tree, rock, and human limbs. As his stand advances, he gains new abilities, eventually being able to transfer parts of his body in order to shoot from another direction and fire a nail with infinite rotation. A strange power all around, but brutal when applied correctly. Though initially in the races for selfish reasons, Reasons, Johnny ends up preventing the use of the corpse parts by the villainous Funny Valentine, preventing the American leader from becoming an all-out world dictator. This makes a huge impact, since without his involvement, the world would have fallen under Valentine's control. So even with his self-interest, he still makes the world-saving category even if it wasn't his intention. Johnny's lifespan was not the worst of the JoJo's, but it certainly wasn't the best. Going out at 29, but managing to save the life of both his wife and and child in the process. His journey may have been brief, but he certainly shook up the world on his way. The daughter of Jotaro, Jolene, had some big shoes to fill when it came to her legacy. Her feelings towards Jotaro could be described as mixed at best, eventually leading her to wind up in prison. Her rebellious streak caused the rift between the two of them. Once Jotaro discovers that she had been set up as a trap for him, he finally goes to help break Jolene out. This of course doesn't go as planned, and Jolene ends up choosing to stay in order to help her father regain his memories and stand which were stolen from him. She has impressive physical combat bad skills from the start, able to deck a guard with a single punch. Once her stand is awoken, her versatility explodes. Stone Free allows Jolene to unravel parts of her body into string. She has full control over the strings, able to pickpocket items, swing from the strands, stitch her own wounds, and slice at her opponents due to the sharpness of the material. Her natural reactions are impeccable, managing to stop a bullet with little warning. Creative uses aside, Jolene is a match for many an opponent with her brute strength and quick reactions. Though perishing in this final fight along with her father, Jolene faces off against Against Made in Heaven, a stand with incredible powers of time manipulation and the potential to create a new universe. Aside from the time manipulation, the stand itself is still incredibly strong. Jolene fought against Pucci in order to restore her father, but saw it through to prevent him from completing a plan formed with the help of Dio. Her final acts saved Emporio, who was able to deal the final blow on Pucci, creating a timeline without his meddling. Her heroics were short-lived, but her power unquestionable. Her fearless, though reckless actions and stubborn determination coupled with a unique and versatile power set swings her above our previous entries. Had her adventures continued, she may have climbed even higher. 
The youngest of the protagonists, Giorno has an odd history in many ways. Being the son of Dio but through the body of Jonathan Joestar, he has the legacy of the two original rivals. But Giorno certainly isn't overshadowed by his predecessors. His future is fully his own and his dedication is immense. Set on protecting others as he had previously, Giorno is looking to take over the Mafia in order to use it as a force of good. And at the incredibly young age of 15, he does just that. He manages to take over the organization Passione and then teams up with the Speedwagon Foundation in order to continue doing good. And this is where his story left him. He has created a new power dynamic entirely in Naples and will now have a massive influence over how the city's underground functions. At such a young age, he has a lot of life left to continue fulfilling that role. But good intentions alone can't grant you a high slot. Giorno makes up for that in sheer strength. His stand is incredibly powerful. Able to create life, be it animals or plants, he can also transform people and objects into other organisms. This creation tactic can be used in a form of healing, though it is noted as just replacing what was damaged instead of actually healing. Gold experience can also take away life energy, causing an organism to rapidly age. With all this manipulation of life energy, it is no wonder Giorno can also sense it. He's even able to track objects he fuses with additional life energy. These tactics all have excellent strategic flexibility and work well in strange situations. So what about regular combat? Gold experience has Giorno covered there too, boasting an incredible amount of physical power. These punches can infuse his opponents with life energy on contact, causing the pain to be much more intense and last longer in the mind of the user. All this power is phenomenal, but gold experience also does one better and becomes even stronger. The second form, gold experience requiem, gains a new ability, able to return anything to zero. A weird power, but incredibly strong. It can erase any action, making it like a real-life control Z. It can also make some someone's willpower becomes zero as well. This has a nasty after effect as being killed by this stand keeps the person trapped in a continuous loop, having the occurrence of their death turn to zero only for them to be immediately killed again. An endless cycle that is inescapable. Even at such a young age, Giorno has deity-like powers in his hands. He is not a person to be messed with. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who could defeat him now. The Jojo with the most appearances in the series so far. Jotaro is incredibly memorable. From his design to his power set, you can't ignore this imposing figure. We don't fully know everything he's gotten up to in his life. We can be certain that it did keep him traveling the world and following on some supernatural leads or that of stand users. Unless this was a touring series of starfish lectures, we can sadly assume that it was for the Speedwagon Foundation. What we do know for sure is his escapades in parts three three through six, where he makes significant moves that affect the outcome on a large number of occasions. First was the quest to Egypt, to not only save his mom, but to also put an end to Dio once and for all. On the way there was no lack of hardships, with assassins at every turn, but Jotaro kept pushing onward to his main goal. His calm and aloof personality makes him intimidating and cold, but it's just his perspective. It even came in handy in winning back the souls of his traveling companions. Without Jotaro, their mission may have ended early than anticipated. He was able to finally finish what his great-great-grandfather had started, destroying Dio for good. His fight against Dio didn't fully end with the villain's demise. Jotaro continued to thwart the post-mortem plans of the vampire through his quarrel with Pucci. The priest intended to form the upgraded stand Sea Moon and later made in heaven. Jotaro gave his life to allow his daughter, Jolene, to survive. Though, like we said earlier in this video, she didn't last much longer against the villain, she managed to protect the boy who would deal the final blow. Without this chain of events, Pucci and Dio would have succeeded their goals of rewriting the universe. Power-wise, Jotaro wields incredible strength thanks to Star Platinum. This stand is a force of nature on its own, able to match blow for blow with the likes of the world. Aside from power levels, Star Platinum and the world share the ability to stop time for a matter of moments, giving the user a chance to gain a tactical advantage. This ability is awakened only during his fight with Dio. Before then, the stand still boasts super speed, enhanced eyesight, and amazing self-preservation. Star Platinum can intercept bullets and bend steel bars, while still having the delicate precision to surgically remove something from a person's skull. The versatility of Star Platinum gives Jotaro an edge over the competition. 
Now, he may not be the most frequently featured JoJo, but he certainly takes the prize for longest lifespan. Unlike many of his relatives, Joseph has managed to make it to old age, approximately 91 as of part three. Not only has he traveled the world, had a family, survived four plane crashes, and fought many powerful opponents, undead or otherwise, he's still kicking. He even attended his own funeral. With all that time on his hands, he has to have done some pretty incredible deeds. Joseph is the second second Jojo of the series, the direct grandson of the original Jonathan Joestar. With the series still being new at the time of his introduction, he had his own mark to carve out, and boy oh boy did he manage. Thanks to the training employed by his predecessor, he had a natural talent for Hamon, making him have an edge in a fight from the get-go. He later refines these talents through training with Caesar and Lisa Lisa, working in anticipation for a battle against the Pillarmen. Through Hamon, he is able to imbue objects with energy in order to wield them as weapons. He also makes use of Hamon in more stage magic-like fashion in order to distract his foes. In his older years, Joseph would return to the fray in order to save his daughter from the effects of Dio awakening her stand. Now boasting both Hamon and a stand, being the only Jojo to do so, his combat is proven effective against the vampires as they are susceptible to Hamon-powered attacks. With its form of thorny vines, Hermit Purple is useful as both an offensive and defensive tactic. In his illustrious career of fighting vampires, the Pillar Men, and and dangerous stand users, Joseph's best tactic has been his strategy and quick thinking. He can outwit his opponents and distract them in order to gain an advantage. He finds a great power in his words, being able to talk the Pillar Men into delaying a fight for a month so he can train. His charming persona also grants him a great many allies, gaining favor and being stronger in numbers as a result. Even with his power set not necessarily being the strongest, his clever mind can lend him enough of an advantage to secure a victory. It's easy to see that this legacy of characters each has their own strengths to bring. Who is your favorite Jojo? I know what you're gonna say. Your next line is, I think Joseph Joestar is the best Jojo. NANI! <laughs> no, no, can I say that? Oh, I don't know if I can say that. Do you agree with our rankings? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more lists like this one. Thanks for watching.